What is the truth about the prosperity gospel? My name's Gabe, this is John Michael. Today we're gonna be reacting to our brother, Alan Parr. A lot of you guys know him from YouTube, Instagram. He made a reel that uh, we're gonna be talking about today. And Alan Parr has talked a lot about the prosperity gospel and he's made some points. And first I'm gonna show you guys his video and then we're gonna come back and tell you guys what the Bible says. So see you soon. Here are four false teachings that if they're being taught in your church, you need to run. Number one, that every Christian has to speak in tongues in order to be saved or have the Holy Spirit. Not true. Number two, that you can speak something into existence. You can claim it, you can decree it, not true. Number four is that you have to be healthy and wealthy as a Christian, not true. I just want to remind you guys, if this is your first time to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm doing a live Bible study this Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, so I'd love to see you guys then. But also, John Michael, I'm tagging him in the title, so real quickly, hit his tag, subscribe to him for me, he's amazing. Okay, let's get into it. A lot in that video. First sure of all, was. I want to say this, that this video isn't in hate towards Alan Parr. This isn't like coming at him saying he's not a Christian, because I fully believe he's a born-again Christian. Absolutely. I believe he loves God. I believe he has an amazing heart for God, and to tell the truth. However, we're talking about the ideas that he's spreading and how they're unbiblical in the way that we see it. So his fourth point was saying that uh, you have to be healthy and wealthy in order to, uh, that God like has to have you healthy and wealthy. And it's funny because actually never once did any of this prosperity gospel or people that he's condemning say that you have to be healthy and wealthy to be a good Christian. Exactly. A lot of people say the prosperity gospel is like this, they term this name to a lot of preachers like Kenneth Copeland or Todd White or Benny Hinn mm -hmm. or just honestly any influential pastor and they say they're a prosperity gospel. Well, it's interesting because whenever I talk about the prosperity gospel, the first thing is we gotta define what does that mean? Yeah. Everyone has their own definition of it. Some people literally think the prosperity gospel is just name it and claim it. My own definition of the prosperity gospel is that it is at all time God's will for all of your needs to be met and all of your needs to be supplied because I believe that's what the Bible says. And so whenever it comes to people who are dealing with sickness, who are dealing with poverty, who are dealing with any of these things, it is my core belief that God actually doesn't desire anybody to endure that. Whether, whether a Christian does go through sickness and does go through poverty or not, it doesn't change how God feels about them. He doesn't like poverty no matter what. He doesn't like sickness no matter what. And so... If you have any thoughts on that, you can share them and then- I'm No good father yeah. would allow bad things intentionally to happen to his children. And a lot of these things that like everyone comes against the prosperity gospel for, I'll be honest, when people ask me, do I believe the prosperity gospel? I actually say this, I say, I believe the words of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And actually, if you talk to these people, Brother Copeland or, or Todd White or any of these people that they're criticizing and condemning, they'll tell you that they believe the Bible. They believe what the word of God says. So when we throw out these labels like word of faith or prosperity or charismatic movement, and then we just love to label these things and it's like, if you attain to any of these churches, you're in a false prophet church. It's literally just labeling something and then calling it false. Yeah, and then just kind of cherry picking. Key exactly. Phrases to... And then they take all the bathwater. You ever heard the phrase, don't kick out the baby with the bathwater? That's exactly what they're doing. So no one here is saying that if you're not wealthy, you're a bad Christian. No one here is saying that if you're not healthy, that you don't have enough yeah, faith. Like no one here is saying even that you have to pray in tongues in order to be saved. I have never said that. I've never heard Kenneth Copeland say that. Like I have right. rarely ever even heard people talk about tongues <laughs> in that manner. However, we know that tongues are a great thing and therefore every born again Christian. That yeah. doesn't mean you have to have it. And so these people literally just say these things and then they say things like, if they're a false prosperity preacher, don't listen to them. And they'll call myself a prosperity. No, I'm just a believer in Jesus Christ. You know, this is very interesting. Going back to sickness, sin, poverty. Uh, Bill Johnson actually does this message that I found very interesting. He's talking about the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 13, and the part that says, deliver us from evil. So it's interesting, the word evil there, when you break it down, is three different words stacked on top of each other. The first word being evil poneros. The second one uh, meaning evil ponos. And the third one, evil penis. And so each one has a slightly different definition. The first definition, poneros, means sin. That's the direct definition of that word. The second level, you know, that word comes from another word, which is ponos, that means sickness. sickness. And the third level of that, uh, penis, um, is, it sounds weird, <laughs> but oh. is poor right. and it means poverty. <laughs> no, okay. but so whenever you talk about, so Michael, we're talking about Jesus now. Okay. Whenever, I know it just always sounds weird, but whenever we're talking about the Lord's prayer and Jesus says to pray like this, that we would be delivered from evil. He's actually talking about all three levels of the yes. word evil, which is sin, sickness, and poverty. No, that's so true. Literally Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you would have life and life abundantly. And I have a question for Alan 
important to anybody out there. Where in this Bible right here do we see that when someone was sick, when someone was hurting, that Jesus looked at them and said, it's God's plan for you to be sick. It's God's plan for you to be poor. It's God's plan for your life to be miserable. Never, not once. No. Not once did he even say that, that, that your sickness and your pain is something that God sent. Yeah. Instead, Show me the scripture where Jesus doesn't heal somebody. Bro, Jesus it's says, not no, there. I'm not heal you. In fact, actually, yeah. the only place it was there was in Mark 6. It was where they were unbelief. They received him not in his own hometown. Mm -hmm. He received there no honor. And it says, yeah. and he could there do no mighty works, save he healed a couple of the sick folk because of their unbelief. And what's interesting is like people don't want to talk about like people in the Old Testament that were blessed by God, right? That's they absolutely they true. They don't want to talk about like- We're going to be blind to David. Abe, let's talk about Abraham, right? Like- My man was loaded. Himself, loaded. the nation of Abraham being bigger than other entire yeah, nations. And, yeah, and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the same thing. You're talking about a whole nation of people, whole nation worth of resources, literally from this one family and this one family that was blessed by God. So we don't want to talk about that, how God blessed them like that. And also let people think for themselves, telling people, oh, these people are prosperity teachers. Don't listen to them or, or these people are teaching this certain thing don't listen to them is is completely misguiding them and mislabeling them i mean the reality is that this wealth and riches are not for us they're not to exalt us they're not for these preachers or these pastors the bible says in timothy it says the love of money is the root of, first timothy 6 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil yeah. it's not evil to have a hundred million dollars did you know jeff bezos with his amazon company he does a, a bursting with pride month you want to know why he could do a bursting with pride and support you know this all this stuff is because he takes the money and uses it for evil purposes. But how much more should we take money and use it for the goodness of God? Yeah. How much more should... It, people didn't know this, but Brother Copeland took his jet and sent it to the Middle East with Glenn Beck. And then Glenn Beck helped use that jet for his operations to evacuate more than 5,000 people. Another fun fact. This is an insider thing. Kent Copeland's actually given away 13 jets. 13 jets. Yeah. But he's also um, funded uh, Daniel Kalinda and Christ for the Nations, which has seen more than 110 million people <laughs> say. Oh so God. when you make videos that are just like completely saying all the bad things. And again, we, we never said that you have to be prosperous. Like the prosperity gospel there is the people behind it that they're criticizing. But these people never said that you have to be wealthy in order to, in order to please God. No, in order to please God, you do what he says. Yeah. We're not saying you have to pray in tongues in order to be saved. No, it's just God's promise hat is for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can pray in tongues. You don't have to. The point is stick to the Bible. If the yes. Bible says it, believe it. If it doesn't say it, then don't believe it. So yes. whenever you're talking about all these prosperity ministers, it's like we don't have to sit here and defend all these guys. Oh, yeah, even though not. like we know a lot of these guys personally and we know their heart and their ministry and things that they've done. At the end of the day, it's like we take everything they say. We yeah. take everything that our local pastors will say and we have to hold it up to accountable to the word of yeah. God and say, yeah. is this true? Is this not true? And so we just ask that you guys do the same thing. That's true. Yeah. Literally, I'm not going to sit here and say that everything Kenneth Copeland says, I agree with, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Or everything that Todd White says. Or anything anyone says. No, <laughs> literally. So, however, at the same time, we shouldn't sit outside and be like, everyone this pastor says is completely wrong and I'm not listening to him no matter yeah, what. He said one wrong thing, therefore everything this he's is ever done is all this wrong. Is, this is destroyed by Christ. Like, like doing those things is just so false. One day, I guarantee you, in heaven, God will look straight into the eyes of so many of us and he'll say, I tried getting this to you, but you wouldn't listen to this man. You wouldn't listen to this man because you trusted the words of someone else telling them that they, that they were false. God has sent so many ministers. He sent so many gifts to the body of Christ that we've just disregarded because we watched a Netflix documentary. Are we really trusting a right. Netflix documentary that was made to shame pastors above the word of God? Well, like you said, it's a body, right? So each part of the body takes care of its own thing. The head takes care of our thinking and yep. overall functions. We have arms that take care of all the arm things we do. We have legs, we have all these different functions in the body. And that's exactly what the body of Christ is. We have all these people who are anointed for specific things, built up of a bunch of different people who are anointed yep. in a bunch of different ways. So the worst thing we can do is put up a wall of offense, which is like a literal fence yep. that blocks us from ever hearing or understanding what these guys have to say. And even if not everything that they say is completely true, there's still is stuff to be learned from each other and from other members of the body. We need each other. We need everybody. That's so true. You got to be able to think for yourself and not just completely discount something. I know, I'll be honest, one man has has recently had like a, he's been, he has this big testimony that he travels to churches and he tells people about how his, his father-in-law has done all these wrong things. And then he talks about how this whole movement and he lumps all these preachers and pastors into this whole movement. And because of his experience, we're supposed to assume that all these pastors, all these preachers are somehow 
false. So we're not supposed to actually listen to what they preach and examine it based on the word of God and actually think about it for ourselves. Yeah. But instead, we're just supposed to listen to this man that had a bad experience and say, oh, they're false and they're just doing it for the wrong reasons. You know what humility is? This is very interesting. The actual core definition, biblical definition of humility is listening. Mm. Listening so to true. what other people say. What pride does is it shuts down our ears from even hearing somebody. So a That's lot of times true. we get in pride and we're like, we think we know. Because we watched that Netflix documentary, because we watched that YouTube video, we think that we know, but, and so we don't even listen to anybody else. But in reality, that's exactly what pride is. Pride is saying, what you have to say is meaningless. I don't even need to hear it. I'm shutting myself down. That documentary on Netflix didn't have any actual purpose or message. It was just criticizing what everyone said. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. We want to make it very clear. We're not here supporting um, doing offerings just so that you can get yourself personally advanced or telling people they need to give to you so that like you could just increase your bank account because that's not truth. But then again, that's not what a lot of these guys do. What a lot of these guys do that people criticize is actually doing offerings to expand the kingdom of God to expand ministry, the gospel. For example, I mean, when people give to what I do, you're expanding my mission on social media and the internet and the ministry and in person to go and preach out the gospel. You're not just making me better off. And if someone were to misuse the wealth or if someone were to lie or to fraud or to try to advance their own interests, then obviously that's wrong. No one is saying that that's right. <laughs> but when we use prosperity, when we use wealth for the right reasons, then that gives glory to God. In fact, and it's all subjective, it's all relative. You know, I was recently talking to a friend that was against um, Kenneth Copeland and, and prosperity. And I looked at him and I said, how much do your shoes cost? How much do your jeans cost? How much does the house cost that you live in? And his eyes started to open up and he was like, well, you know, $200,000 is my house. My jeans about 50 bucks. He wasn't super wealthy in American terms. And I said to someone living in Africa, they would call you extremely wealthy. Mm -hmm. And then I asked him, I said, why don't you sell your jeans? Why don't you sell your shoes and give them to the Africans right now? Because they yeah. could need them, bro. Do you really love God? Why, why, why don't you sell all your nice things? Wealth is relative. Wealth is relative. And now you guys are listening to me and you're like, oh wow, that's true. And you know it's true because no one is going, no one is right when they condemn another person for having something. Right. Did you know that some, there actually is a scripture. You know what? There is a scripture. I'll give you this. There is a scripture where someone uh, said out loud, why don't we sell this and give it to the poor? John Michael, guess who said that? Judas Iscariot. <laughs> Judas Iscariot. The man, betrayed Jesus. <laughs> the man who betrayed Jesus. So literally all these people that are against prosperity are now forming themselves with Judas Iscariot. That is interesting. The woman that poured out the, thir the perfume that she poured out on Jesus' feet, you want to know how much it was worth? $30,000. Yeah. And Judas was fuming, fuming. Yeah. And he said- this guy to help himself to the, to the treasury. Jesus no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's stealing man. it himself. So yeah. all these people, and you know, I'll be honest, I, I know someone that is so against prosperity, but yet their goal is to have a uh, seven figure salary and have and buy a house for themselves. And instead it's ironic. Instead of condemning each other, let's just <laughs> celebrate what we're able to do with God with what we have. Thank like, you. Instead of condemning people. Just be happy for each yeah. other. Yeah, exactly. Like my goodness. And you could be happy for the Verizon or Walmart when the company does well, but you can't be happy when someone that preaches the gospel is doing well. You want them to live on the streets and work at McDonald's? At the core, whenever people are <laughs> like, judgmental towards other people, about about, you know what they have that really there's this underlying belief that there's not enough mm, that true. there's limited resources that we're running out that if you have a million dollars I can't have a million dollars that's not true I believe that the earth is structured in such, in such a way and don't come at me for saying this but I believe the earth is structured in such a way where we, we're not going to run out of resources you know there's actually interesting there's this youtuber called Vsauce and he did oh, yeah. he did a study on how much land has actually been built on in the entire world and at that point, like in 2011, the, the max amount of land that has been built on is 0.1% of, of, of surface yeah. on the earth. And so we're talking and about- And you got like, a problem? We're talking about- Kenneth Copeland having a house? Get out of here. I mean, we're talking about like, oh, the trees, the trees and stuff. And I get like, you know, don't be like ridiculous when it comes to the environment or whatever. But it's like, at the same time, there's so much resource and the earth is built to be this massive resource for us. There's not a limit. Just because somebody has a hundred million dollars doesn't mean that you can't have that. It just means they probably worked harder for it. They probably did a couple smarter things. But Nick is in the podcast too, so be sure to go check it out. I'll put that link down in the description below. We love you guys. Yeah, it's called Mansplain, so go check it out. We love you guys. Take it easy.